Over the last few months, I've made multiple videos showing you guys how you can edit like Eman Gatsi. However, those videos have only been showing the practical skills, and I've never actually made a video showing you guys how you can actually use those skills to create your own Eman Gatsi style edits. So in this video, I'm going to be walking you guys through my entire creative thought process, which I use to take a boring unedited video and how I turn it into a super well edited Eman Gatsi style video. Also, I just want to quickly mention something. If you are interested in leveling up your edits to start editing like some of the top YouTubers in the world as soon as possible, then check out Skillcut through the top link in the description below. So the first thing I do when I receive an unedited video that I need to edit, or I'm just editing a video in this style, is I write down all of the possible scenes that I can create with the voiceover or script. And if this is a longer video, I may even have to write down over 30 of them. And by scene, I mean all of the edited little clips or animations that you may see in Eman Gatsi's videos. And if you've seen any of my tutorials, these are also just scenes that you could use in a video. And the way I come up with ideas for scenes is I just simply think how can I best visually describe what is being said in the video or how can I best represent what is being said in this clip with animations, text, motion graphics or any part of video editing. And the vast majority of video editors are perfectly fine with doing this with stock footage, but when you are trying to make Eman Gatsi style videos, you need to be a little bit more creative. For example, if a video is saying, when I was younger I didn't have many friends, you need to be thinking how can I best represent this saying or like sentence with the visuals. And when I do this, I normally come out with ideas that fall into two categories. The first thing is an animated scene or an edit with which represents something like realistic in the world. For example, you can have a house or a car driving on the motorway, or you can have maybe a plane going through the sky. You get it, it's like all this realistic stuff that actually happens in real life. And the goal for this is to make it look realistic. It doesn't need to be like Unreal Engine or something like super realistic looking in terms of the graphics, but you need to give off more of a natural feel. For example, with like The Simpsons or SpongeBob, like it's, it doesn't look like real life, but you can see how people are still moving with two legs. People are still like, there's still houses, there's still cars. And it's trying to like almost recreate reality, but without the insane graphics that we have in like real films. And the second type of ideas that I normally have or edits that I create are things that are non-realistic, which don't try and recreate or have any sort of reality to them. These are things that just involve text or shapes or like, pictures of things that aren't real or like the background isn't like a park or like a city it's instead just like a grid or like just some sort of motion graphic that I've created to make it look cool. With these ideas I'm not trying to make things look like reality I'm just trying to represent things in a cool way like this normally can be done with numbers or shapes as I said. But the objects can still be stuff from real life it's just the fact that you're not trying to make things look super realistic you're just trying to maybe just show something in a different way. For example let's just say I was trying to talk about money with the first example I would just have an example of like I don't know a guy in a bank but the second idea, like with this second type, it would maybe just be like a coin floating with a background of like, I don't know, a grid or like a gradient behind it just to make it look cool. It's not necessarily, it doesn't need to look realistic or any of this stuff. But these two ways can still both visually represent what is being talked about. And you can still tell a story with both. So going back to the I didn't have many friends example, you could have like for the first method, you could have maybe a park and you could have like groups of teenagers sitting in this park and in the middle you could just have like one lonely kid who's not talking to anyone looking sad and you could like have maybe the background of everyone else blurred out you can still see their people but you would just focus in on that one kid with no friends and this could be your scene and if I was editing a video and one of the sentences or sayings was like this exactly I would probably create something like this to represent like what's being said but you could represent this the second way. For example, you could have maybe a bar, like one of those bars you have on your phone to show the um, like the power you have, and you could have it so like the energy in the bar like is like getting drained. So it starts off like really high up, like it's like 100%, and then you could have it like drained down to like 20%, so and then the bar is basically losing power. And it's like you've just lost power on your phone. And you could have above the bar, it could say something like friends, and it will just basically show that like you don't have many friends. I think that's a really bad example for like this specific thing. It, this is better when it comes to things like money. Like if you were saying I was broke, you could have like money and then that same bar 
and then the money would like go down or like I lost all my money and that would be a really good way of representing that. But I guess that's a pretty bad example when it comes to like the friends example, but I guess it would still kind of work and it's still better than just like using stock footage. But yeah, there'd be like a million and one ways to visually represent like this specific, like I had no friends. And at the end of the day, imagining these scenes and building up your like creative muscle in your brain is a skill. And the more you do it, the faster it will become. Like I remember when I started trying to make Iman Gatsi style videos, or I started trying to create these like scenes for my clients and for my own videos. It would take me ages to even think of one scene because I'd just be thinking like, oh, would that even work? Would people understand it and all this stuff. And over time I got faster and faster and faster at coming up with ideas for scenes. So yeah, instead of having to constantly worry about like how I'm actually going to visually explain something, I can just jot down all of them onto this list before I even start editing. So when I'm actually trying to do the technical side of the process, which is actually like creating the ideas and turning them into a reality, I then don't have to sit there thinking every 10 minutes, oh, how would I explain this? I can just, I can just look at my cheat sheet and pretty much just like use that as a reference point and a guideline to how I'm going to create like the edit. And it means I can do things a lot faster because I don't have to stop every like half an hour and just think, oh, how would I do this? How could I explain this? Because I can just use the ideas I've already created. And it means instead of having to stop my editing and just, you know, think about, oh, how would I visually like explain this? Or how would I make this look good? I can just crack on and use my um, animation and motion graphics skills in just one go to finish everything as soon as possible. And if you guys actually want to learn the technical stuff like the motion graphics and the animations, I would highly recommend that you check out Skillcut, which is my video editing product. And you can check that out through the top link in the description below because it will actually teach you guys the key skills that you actually need to learn to be able to make videos exactly like Iman Gatsi and all of the other fastest growing and most successful YouTubers as well. And the last key thing you need to know is that this whole animation scene creating stuff is very creative, which means there's gonna be a huge amount of subjectivity to it. And what you might think is great, another person or your client might not think is great. So my advice to you, if you're getting started with this animation stuff or you're getting started with, you know, doing some really high level video editing like Iman Gatsi's video editors, is I would recommend that you stick with the stuff that is universally understood. For example, if you're trying to make an animation about something else, like for instance, that I had no friends thing, stick to the stuff that pretty much anyone can understand. Because for instance, with that, let's just say you try to do some really abstract idea and you try to create like an animation, which like is quite niche and it's like, it might be based off your own personal experience and you're not sure if other people might understand it. Just don't even bother. Just stick to simple concepts that look great. For example, with the examples that I used about the I had no friends one, I would recommend instead of trying to make it really complex or anything, I would recommend that you just try and get a simple idea and just make it look as great as possible. Because I remember when I like tried to create an edit for a client and I thought the idea was really cool, but it was actually just based off my personal like experience in life. So if because it's my personal experience, other people aren't really going to get it. So I remember my client was just like, what, what is that? Like, that's nothing to do with the video, but I thought it was, I was just kind of like referencing to my own personal experience. So um, like it was my interpretation of what they were saying. So yeah, that's why I said focus on just making it look really good, but and then just have a really simple concept because that means everyone will understand your video, but people and clients will really appreciate it because it still looks great. So sometimes it's just best to stick to what everyone can understand. So yeah, I hope this video made sense and I hope you can now go and create even better edits.